Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today let's talk a little bit more about the actual development of the 10mm cartridge. When the 10mm cartridge eventually started gaining popularity, John and Bob Nosler contacted Colonel Jeff Cooper, or Jeff Cooper, to contribute a forward for their reloading manual concerning information on the 10mm cartridge development. The information presented by Colonel Cooper to the Nozzlers is as follows. The round is actually the concept of a fellow by the name of Wet Collins, who put the project together while connected with Peterson Publishing Company in Hollywood, California. Collins was assisted by a fellow by the name of John Adams and Irvington Stone, and to a limited extent by Cooper himself. The goal was to develop a cartridge that would rise the power and range and penetration of the 45 ACP while remaining manageable as to the recoil when fired from a conventional semi-automatic pistol. The entire idea behind it was that if they could manage to fit a powerful 10 millimeter cartridge into a CZ-75, which at the time was considered to be the best of the nines and also one of the most robustly built, they could achieve a distinct step forward, including increased magazine capacity. Unfortunately, due to political influences, the CZ-75 wasn't actually allowed into the United States at the time that the cartridge was being developed. The case they selected to develop the cartridge from was that of the obsolete 30 Remington rifle cartridge. They cut it to magazine length, straightened out the case to accommodate a 210 grain bullet of 41 caliber, and, in fact, it didn't work. The 41 bullet was a hair too thick to be stuffed into the barrel that could safely fit into a 9mm slide. They then tried the 180 grain bullet from the obsolete 3840 Winchester cartridge, which, by the way, is actually misleading because that 3840 actually fires a 40 caliber bullet, or 10mm. Well, that said, the first modern 10 millimeter cartridge was basically a cutoff 30 Remington shooting a 40 caliber bullet, but it still didn't work. So, not having a CZ-75 to work with, they then tried to fit the new cartridge into a P-35 Browning, but the stresses were too high for a production weapon like the Browning. Even though the Browning P-35 couldn't handle the pressures generated by the 10 millimeter cartridge for very long, Testing, however, did reveal some astonishing ballistic performance. For reasons unknown to Cooper, modest charges of unique seemed to push a 180 grain bullet at muzzle velocities that caused us to doubt their conograph readings. According to Cooper, the new cartridge was logging in at around 1,200 feet per second with a 5-inch barrel with remarkable accuracy. Based on my years of experience, with the 10 millimeter cartridge and the handguns that use it, I have to concur that Cooper's original assertion that the 10 millimeter cartridge has extremely good accuracy potential can be demonstrated in the video clip you're about to see. Some of you may have seen that clip before, but it does demonstrate the accuracy potential of the 10mm cartridge. In the years since the development of the 10mm cartridge, a number of 10mm have come and gone from the market. In spite of that, the number of 10mm available in today's market is continuing to grow. As a dedicated 10mm fan, I'm hoping the trend in the market will continue to grow. And if you've never owned or fired a 10mm, personally I'd say you're missing out. Well anyway, that's really basically what I had in mind to say about the 10mm cartridge today. So until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.